Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the relationship between schizotypal personality disorder and the dark triad traits? So psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. So I'll start here with schizotypal personality disorder, then talk about the dark triad, and then look at the relationship between these constructs. Now, I found an interesting study on this question. I'll put the reference for that study in the description for this video. And that's what I'm really using in part to answer this question. Now, schizotypal personality disorder is interesting because we have a few different names for it. There's the official personality disorder in cluster A in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. So it's in the same cluster as paranoid and schizoid personality disorders. We also see other terms like schizotypy and schizotypal personality traits. Really, all of these refer to the same set of symptoms, but what's important to remember here is schizotypal personality disorder, again, is the official disorder. So somebody needs to meet the full criteria in order to be diagnosed with that disorder. If somebody has some of the criteria met or they so signs of some of the criteria, but they don't really fully meet any particular criterion, this could be a subclinical presentation. And this is what we really refer to as schizotypy. So everybody has some of the symptoms I'm going to list here to some extent. There's a continuum in terms of these symptoms. And that's what we're really talking about again with schizotypy and sometimes with schizotypal personality traits. So again, moving back to the disorder, let's take a look at the symptom criteria. There are nine symptom criteria. We see ideas of reference, odd beliefs or magical thinking, unusual perceptual experiences. So these really don't rise to the level of psychosis, like they're not hallucinations or delusions. They would be right below that. So we can see a relationship already here between schizotypal personality disorder and schizophrenia. Next, we see odd thinking and speech suspiciousness or paranoid ideation, inappropriate or constricted affect. So this means that somebody has low variability in their emotions. They don't necessarily have the whole range of emotions available. Sometimes we see this also in a blank stare or somebody smiling or laughing at a story that isn't funny. Or for example, somebody was telling like a sad story or kind of a melancholy story somebody with this particular symptom might not recognize that story is sad. So moving on the list, we have behavior or appearance that's odd, peculiar, or eccentric. Then we have lack of close friends, and sometimes we see this symptom manifested as having no friends. And we also see excessive social anxiety because of paranoid fears. So not the type of social anxiety we see with social anxiety disorder or perhaps to some extent with generalized anxiety disorder. The symptom criterion here is about paranoia. So all these symptoms and the symptom criteria can really be condensed down to three areas. Positive symptoms, negative symptoms, and disorganized symptoms. So the positive symptoms, sometimes we call these cognitive perceptual deficits. So unusual perceptual experiences, magical thinking, ideas of reference, and suspiciousness, all those would fall under the positive symptoms. For the negative symptoms, sometimes we refer to these as interpersonal difficulties, so constricted affect, lack of close friends, and excessive social anxiety. And for the disorganization, we see symptoms like odd eccentric behavior and odd speech. So again, we're taking all the symptom criteria and really just condensing them into positive, negative, and disorganized. So moving from schizotypal personality disorder to the dark triad traits. So the dark triad traits, again, psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism, share a number of characteristics. So all three of these constructs have a few things in common. For example, we see low agreeableness on the five-factor model, so being disagreeable. We also see that all three are characterized by being callous and unemotional, being manipulative, although the type of manipulation changes a little from one trait to the next. We also see grandiosity and a lack of honesty and humility. 
So if we now look at each one specifically and look for characteristics that the traits bring that aren't shared, the unique aspects, with psychopathy we see a lot of deceitfulness, sensation-seeking, poor behavioral control, and being impulsive. With narcissism, we see somebody seeks admiration, they have a sense of entitlement, they tend to be jealous of other people, and they have fantasies of success and power. Now one thing that's interesting about narcissism in terms of the dark triad is the individual who's narcissistic is being narcissistic for gains in ego. So they want to feel better about themselves. They don't behave in a narcissistic way for material gain. With psychopathy and Machiavellianism, we do see behavior directed toward material gain. So again, if you combine all these traits together in the dark triad, you see somebody who is trying to inflate their ego and trying to experience material gain. Now with Machiavellianism, we see a different type of manipulation than we see in general with the other two, with psychopathy and narcissism. It's a strategic manipulation. It's a type of manipulation that really appreciates the long game. So somebody with Machiavellianism is calculating. They have good impulse control as opposed to what we see with psychopathy. They're able to delay gratification. Also, they're not attention-seeking. So if we look at psychopathy and narcissism, we see that those two traits are associated with high extroversion and high openness to experience. So for example, high positive emotions and a lot of imagination. But Machiavellianism is associated with low extroversion and low openness to experience. So it diverges a bit from what we see in psychopathy and narcissism. So looking at some of the prior research on schizotypy and the dark triad, we see that there's a positive association between schizotypy and impulsivity, and a positive association between schizotypy and grandiose narcissism. But we see a negative relationship to Machiavellianism. So that's kind of the starting point for the paper that I'm referring to here in this video. So looking at this particular study, they had some different hypotheses about what they would find based on the prior literature. They looked at schizotypal personality disorder and schizotypy in general, and they saw a reckless and eccentric characteristic set there. So they thought, well, this will be positively associated with psychopathy, specifically the cognitive perceptual deficits and the disorganization. Now, the construct of narcissism, they hypothesized there'd be a negative relationship here. So they believed as schizotypy increased, you would see a decrease in narcissism. Or it could, of course, be the other way around. So the reason they thought this is because the narcissist ego identity goals are met through attention and admiration from their social network. So this is inconsistent with social withdrawal or social anxiety like we see with schizotypy. So again, a negative relationship was hypothesized here. And with Machiavellianism, they looked at the characteristics of Machiavellianism, and they see someone who's cautious and cool-headed and has good, again, strategic planning skills. So they thought, well, this doesn't really seem to be related with positive schizotypy or disorganization in a positive way, so they theorized a negative relationship here. As Machiavellianism was higher, there would be less positive schizotypy and less disorganization. Again, this is what was hypothesized. So now looking at the results of this study, some of these results are really not surprising, and one of them is quite a bit surprising. So with the first hypothesis, this was the relationship between psychopathy and schizotypy. Again, the hypothesis was a positive relationship. Well, they found this, so no surprise there. They found that with increased psychopathy, we see more cognitive perceptual deficits and more disorganization. Now, moving over to narcissism, they also found what they expected to find. So this finding, understandably, could be confusing for some. When we think of narcissism, we would think of somebody who does struggle with interpersonal difficulties. Therefore, we would think that as narcissism increased, schizotypy would increase. And of course, that's not what was found here. But if we think about the nature of relationships with narcissism, this actually does make sense. We know that individuals who are narcissistic, in particular grandiose narcissism, we see that individuals with grandiose narcissism do tend to make good first impressions. 
And in the short run, they do pretty well with relationships. In the long run, people tend to dislike them. So if we think about the feelings from the perspective of someone who's narcissistic, these short-term relationships, these good impressions, may provide positive feedback and may satisfy the individual's ego. So these relationships could provide enough fuel to preserve the sense of grandiosity. So from the perspective of somebody who's narcissistic, there aren't any interpersonal difficulties. Again, we're talking about grandiose narcissism. So in this instance, it does kind of make sense that we would see high narcissism associated with low schizotypy. So with these first two findings around psychopathy and narcissism, we don't really see any surprises, although the narcissism result requires a little bit of explanation, but it was hypothesized anyway. It was the expected result. But with Machiavellianism, there was a different finding. Again, if we look at the original hypothesis, there would have been a negative relationship to positive schizotypy and disorganization. This was not found. But a positive relationship with interpersonal difficulties was found. So individuals who are Machiavellianistic tend to have trouble in relationships. So their strategy seems to be effective in some ways for material gain. They are manipulative in the long run, they have good impulse control, but this does result in problems with relationships and a sense of loneliness. So the Machiavellianistic strategy may work to meet some goals, but it doesn't work well to meet any type of relational goal or to be relationally satisfying. So again, this was a bit of a surprise. This was different than the original hypothesis. So with schizotypy and the dark triad traits, we see an interesting relationship. We see that some of the findings are a little bit surprising in some ways, and some need some explanation. And really, it just speaks to the complexity of the dark triad traits. And I think one of the issues with the dark triad is some of the traits pull in different directions. And I mentioned that before. So we see, in one sense, impulsivity with psychopathy, in another sense, impulse control with Machiavellianism, and a few other conflicts. And of course, a lot of things that they share, a lot of characteristics that all these traits share. So it shouldn't be surprising there's an interesting relationship with schizotypy. Again, when we talk about schizotypy and the dark triad traits, we are talking about subclinical traits. We're not talking about something that necessarily rises to schizotypal personality disorder, for example, or to antisocial personality disorder or narcissistic personality disorder. All these characteristics can exist at a subclinical level. And when we look specifically at the dark triad, it's theorized as subclinical as a construct. So when we talk about the dark triad, we are talking about a subclinical presentation. If we do look at this from the point of view of disorders, it is interesting because you have schizotypal personality disorder, which is cluster A, and you have potentially antisocial personality disorder or narcissistic personality disorder if you expand beyond the dark triad, and those, of course, are both in cluster B. So we see a little bit of a relationship potentially there between cluster A and cluster B, but only if we move to the pathological level. So this is an interesting topic. If you have any thoughts on schizotypal personality disorder and how it may relate to the dark triad traits, please leave those in the comments. As always, I hope you found this description of schizotypy and the dark triad to be interesting. Thanks for watching.